Many of us know addiction to be a chronic illness that alters the structure of the brain. But what actually happens inside the brain when drugs are being administered? What changes do you often see as a result? Here in this series, we're going to further explore the nature of addiction and how it affects the structure of the brain. Before we can understand the full sway of addiction, it would make sense for us to understand the primary areas of the brain that are affected by addiction. There are three main areas of the brain that you often find associated with addiction. The first one being the prefrontal cortex, the limbic system, and the midbrain. So the prefrontal cortex is responsible for all the executive functions in the brain, such as your decision-making processes, your logic, and your own reasoning. This often makes sense of our higher function when we decide whether or not something is a good or a bad idea. The limbic system is the reward circuit of the brain. This is responsible for remembering a lot of pleasant experiences and reminding us that perhaps we could do it again. For example, if you were to eat cake for the very first time, your limbic system would undoubtedly say that cake is such a lovely experience and we should eat cake again sometime. Finally, we have the midbrain. The midbrain is responsible for all of our survival functions, whether it's our vision, our hearing, or our flight and fight responses. The midbrain is responsible for the next 15 seconds and does not view anything past that amount of time. So when drugs and alcohol are first administered into the system, there's a large surge of a neurotransmitter called dopamine. Now dopamine is primarily responsible for a lot of your cognitive functions, movement, and some senses of euphoria, but not to the scale of when you're actually using drugs or alcohol. When someone uses a psychoactive substance, it unleashes a inhuman amount of dopamine, something that you can never get from any natural experience. In fact, the brain even has a hard time comprehending how much dopamine is now in the system. It releases another neurotransmitter known as glutamate. Now, glutamate is responsible for your memory functions. The more glutamate that is in the system, the more likely you are to remember this experience and in greater detail. These neurotransmitters also affect the nature of the midbrain. When you have these many neurotransmitters going on, the midbrain becomes more and more sensitive to the needs of using drugs and alcohol. And these surges of neurotransmitters also affects the nature of the midbrain. The more glutamate and dopamine that's in the system increases the sensitivity of the midbrain to drugs or alcohol, making it a higher priority in the brain's functioning. Once drugs and alcohol are introduced into this pyramid at the base, the other higher levels begin to become less and less of a priority because all the focus of the brain is beginning to become more and more centered on the addiction itself. So this would explain a lot of the physical occurrences you see in your everyday life when people are addicted, that they don't often hold their social obligations at a high enough standard. Maybe people are becoming less social when they're addicted to drugs or alcohol, or they even not show up for work. So this begs the question, if drugs and alcohol can be so dangerous to the nature of the brain that it completely rewires it into a repeated pattern of use, why not just stop? Why doesn't the prefrontal cortex actually make the executive decision that drugs and alcohol are not good and we should cease using? If only it were that simple though. See, the issue is that we have a highly overly stimulated midbrain and the midbrain is closer to the spinal cord, which means that all the electrical signals are going to be triggering the midbrain first before the prefrontal cortex can make an executive decision. So before anyone even has the chance to even consider whether or not picking up another bottle of alcohol or taking another shot of heroin is a good choice, the midbrain is already activated and the limbic system is already going crazy, making it imperative that the drugs and alcohol are actually a necessity of life. Even if your executive functioning does not recognize it as such, your subconscious is already screaming, wanting you to readminister the substance. So in essence, before you even have a chance to consider the choice of addiction, most of your brain has already made up its mind as to whether or not it wants to use. So with this understanding of addiction in mind, it further enforces the need for evidence-based treatment that keeps these considerations in mind before we can actually start creating real change in treatment. 